state we should expect no good thing from the most high however anything that we do give whether it be a gift of tongues or a gift of prophecy it can and it will be used against us in the day of judgment with that said peace to the saints that are in the room to the saints that couldn't make it to the saints watching them but no peace to the wicked the only thing we say to them is repent that they might live uh, let's pick up where we left off I think it was uh, Deuteronomy chapter 7 verse 3 Test, test, testing, testing, testing. Uh, I gotta pay that Home Depot bill. Don't let me forget. Home Depot. Right there. That, 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 bill coming through right. that, that nice carpet. That test, test. Going. There we go. That's what we talking about. That's what we looking for. Test, test, test. Speaking to a test for me. Test. I'm Ron Burgundy. This is what's happening in your world tonight. It's Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 3, I think. Go. He ain't got nowhere to go. Hey, uh, Randy, did uh, bring me, if it's some water in there, some water. If not, that carton of uh, lemonade. <laughs> Neither shall you make marriages with them. Neither shall thou make. Neither shall you. Neither shall thou. Neither shall thou make marriages with them. We talked about that a little bit last last week. Just kind of shooting through some of the lies that God is against interracial marriage and all that. But we spoke to specifically who we is talking about. We read the. Go ahead. Go ahead and start at verse one. When the Lord thy God shall bring thee into the land where you go to possess. It's Deuteronomy 7 verse 1. Watch that. And has cast out many nations before you, the Hittites, the Girgashites, the Amorites, and the Canaanites, and the Perizzites, and the Hivites, and the Jebusites, seven nations greater and mightier than you. Uh-huh. So these are all the nations that he kicked out. He said, go and get up out of there. After he kicked those nations out, he said, don't make marriage. Go ahead. Keep going. And when the Lord thy God shall deliver them before thee. Thou shalt smite them and utterly destroy them. You shall make no covenant with them, nor show mercy unto them. Neither shall you make marriages with them. Your daughter, you, you, your daughter, you shall not give unto his son, nor his daughter shall you take unto your son. All right. So he's saying very clearly, don't make marriages with them. He's, he's named out the nation specifically. That's not the same as saying you can't marry a white girl or. Your white, this white girl can't marry a Mexican, or this black person can't marry a Japanese person. Like that thing, you know what I'm saying? You gotta line that thing up and be able to look at the book. Now, if you can prove it out and say, you know what, this Japanese person is the descendant of the Hittites, that's a different story. Now we can do some talking. Right? If you can line that thing up for me and just show me, like, you know what I'm saying? This is a descendant of the Hittites, then that's different. You know what I'm saying? This is a descendant of the Amorite. Okay, I get it. Now I can work with you. But if you can't line that thing up, then it's like, oh, well, that thing don't make sense to me. Right? You can't make no decision just based off of this person is a, is a different uh, nationality or a different heritage than I am. You know what I'm saying? So therefore, God said I can't marry. You don't want to marry him, that's fine. Right? If you don't want your kids marrying outside of, you know what I'm saying, outside of your race, that's fine. Right? Ain't nothing against that. There's no law against that. It's just that you don't want to tell somebody else that God said do it. Just make that on your own personal rule. Like in my family, we don't do that. Thing. That's fine. If that's your thing, if that's your family, you know what I'm saying, you don't marry, that's fine. Nothing wrong with it. Just don't tell people God do it. That's where people go wrong. All right, keep going. For they will turn away your son from following me, uh -huh. that they may serve other gods. Uh -huh. So will the anger of the Lord be kindled against you and destroy you suddenly. Uh -huh. But thus shall you deal with them. 
and you shall destroy their altars and break down their images uh -huh. and cut down their groves and burn their graven images with fire. Uh-huh. Excuse me. For you are a holy people unto the Lord thy God. Mm -hmm. The Lord thy God has chosen you to be a special people unto himself above all people that are on the face of the earth. Mm-hmm. The Lord did not set his love upon you, nor choose you, because you were more in number than any people. Mm -hmm. For you were the fewest of all people. But because the Lord loved you, and because he would keep an oath, the oath which he had sworn unto your fathers, has the Lord brought you out with a mighty hand and redeemed you out of the house of bondmen for the hand of, from the hand of Pharaoh, king of Egypt. Know therefore that the Lord thy God, he is God, the faithful God, which keeps which keeps covenants and mercies with them that love him and keep his commandments to a thousand generations. All right? If we keep his commandments, he keeps mercy on us and loves us to a thousand generations. All right? How do you think he made it out where, where Abraham followed what God said, Isaac did the same, Jacob did the same, all the sons, though, sin, yet we still get to Yahushua. All right? Because he had mercy on Abraham. And so even though, you know what I'm saying, your kids mess up, God going to punish every one of them. But eventually, I'm still going to keep that promise. To a thousand generations, I will. Right? And so that's how you get to Yahushua. And even us, right? You get to all of us through Abraham being obedient. The same thing can happen in a smaller way for our kids. Or in a larger way if we're obedient in a larger way such as Abraham was. Right? For our kids and our lineage, the same thing can go on. Most of our God is looking for somebody that's standing away. Right? You're going to stand up for it. Keep going. And repays them that hate him to their face to destroy them. He will not be slack to him that hates him. Uh -huh. He will repay him to his face. All right? He said, I'm going to deal with you. Boy, keep going. What's he in there spring? Thou shalt therefore keep the commandments of the statutes and the judgments which I command thee this, which I command thee this day to do them. Uh-huh. Wherefore it shall come to pass if you hearken to these judgments and keep and do them. That the Lord thy God will shall keep unto thee the covenant and the mercy which he swear unto thy fathers. Uh -huh. And he will love thee and bless thee and multiply thee. He will also bless the fruit of thy womb and the fruit of thy land, thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, the increase of thine kind and the flocks of thy sheep and the land which he swear unto thy fathers to give thee. Okay. Thou shalt be blessed above all people. There shall not be a male or female barren among you or among your cattle. Uh -huh. And the Lord will take away from thee all sickness, and will, and will put none of the evil diseases of Egypt, which you know, upon thee, but will lay them upon all them that hate thee. All right? Why every time you know what I'm saying somebody gets sick in one of these churches or period? All right? We come up with all these different solutions. Nobody ever comes to you know what? How about we teach them the word so we can obey it? How about we teach you the word so they can obey it? All right? Most of our God just said He'll take all that sickness from. Them. Right? That got to be our mindset. Our mindset, we superstitious by everything else. Our mindset got to be, well, you know what? If we do what the Most High God say, that's how we get it. Right? Keep going. And thou shalt consume all the people which the Lord thy God shall deliver thee. Thine eyes shall have no pity upon them, neither shalt thou serve their gods, for that will be a snare unto thee. Uh huh. If thou shalt say in thy heart, these nations are more than I, how can I dispossess them? Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not be afraid of them, but shall will, but shall well remember what the Lord thy God did unto Pharaoh and all of Egypt. Mm -hmm. The great temptations which thine eyes saw, and the signs, and the wonders, and the mighty hand, and the, and the stretched out arm whereby the Lord thy God brought thee out, so shall the Lord thy God do unto all this people of whom you are afraid. Mm -hmm. Moreover, the Lord thy God will send thee hornet among them, until they are until that are left and hide themselves from thee be destroyed. That's so he t he's telling us we're gonna go into the land. First he's letting us know you gotta keep these commandments. You keep these commandments, I'll take care of you. Right? Then he said, We're gonna go into the land and he's gonna send hornets before us. Remember when we first spied out on the land, ten of our men, ten out of twelve of our men looked at it and they're like, nah, we can't even do that. That's crazy. It's some big old folks over there. They way bigger than us. We look like grasshoppers compared to them. Right, so they looked at it and they were like, mm, that's not doable. So the most high God, he didn't tell us this at first. Now we come along, we're about to go into the land, we're ready to do it, and now he revealed a plan to us. Now he's like, listen, don't even worry about it. I'm gonna send hornets out there before you. Right? I'm gonna get the sting in their butts. Make them sick. 
You ever seen somebody get lit up by by like a bee or something? They but be done. They be sitting there uh, uh, seizuring and all type of stuff. So imagine hornets, right? Hornets is worse. You see a bunch of hornets and somebody sting these giant? They gonna put that? They gonna be on their butts, right? So now we looking at it like, oh, that's how you gonna do it, right? But he just needs somebody who's willing to step up the play without knowing the plan. They just know. Well, I know you are gonna figure it out somehow, God. You told me to stand right here. This is why I'ma stand without knowing the plan. Then after you really, if you know the plan and you know it's gonna work, it's much easier. So if you got somebody who don't know the plan. But just know that you're the man to make the plan. That thing ain't easy. That's somebody I can work with. All right? Keep going. Thou shalt not be affrighted at them. For the Lord thy God is among you, a mighty God and terrible. And the Lord thy God will put out those nations before thee by little and little. Uh huh. Thou may not consume them at once, lest the beasts of the field increase upon thee. Uh huh. But the Lord thy God shall deliver them unto thee, and shall destroy them with a mighty destruction until they be destroyed. Right? So he said, we're going to do it little by little. And why? That's the beast of the field consume. He said, the beast of the field will mess around and consume you. So everything that the Most High God is doing in this, remember, we are just now getting this plan. He never, he has, we've been walking through the wilderness. We've been trying to figure this thing out. He hasn't given us the plan. But all this is meticulous for him. He's looking like, oh, don't worry about it. I'm going to bring you in there. It's going to happen little by little. I don't think you're just going to get the whole land. Mess around. And the beast that's in the field, they'll mess around and kill your butt. you mess around and get all the land. And you got all these bears and lions and all the different stuff that was already there. They'll mess around and kill you. He's like, no, no, no. We're going to take it little by little. You know what I'm saying? Just little by little. Let them alone. And we're going to take it little by little. Watch this. Keep going. And he shall deliver their kings into thine hand, and thou shalt destroy their name from under heaven. Uh huh. There shall no man be able to stand before thee until you have destroyed them. Uh huh. The graven, the graven images and their gods shall you burn with fire. Mm -hmm. Thou shalt not desire the silver or gold that is on them, nor take it unto thee. He said, Don't you desire there. the silver or the gold, nor do you try to take it with you. Mess around. If it's going to take it, it's going to be a what to them? A snare therein. What's a snare? Trap. That thing gonna be a trap. Right? You get designed all the stuff that they got, and you wanna take it? He said, that thing gonna be a trap. So I said, I gotta set our mindset up. When we go in here, we just getting rid of their stuff. We don't want nothing y'all got. Right? Let's keep going. For it is an abomination to the Lord thy God. <clears throat> Neither shall, thou, neither shall thou bring an abomination into thine house, lest thou be cursed, lest there be a cursed thing like it. But thou shalt utterly detest it, and thou shalt utterly abhor it, for it is a cursed thing. All right? So anything that we see out there, he said, that thing liable to be a curse on us. We got to remember that, right? Keep going. It's chapter 8 now. It's chapter 8. It's Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 1. All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe to do, mm -hmm. that ye may live and multiply, and go in and possess the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers. Mm -hmm. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness, to humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart. Mm -hmm. To humble thee and to prove thee. Right? When they say prove thee, he said test you. Right? So I'm trying to bring you down. I'm trying to test you. And I want to understand what's really in your heart. Right? I mean, I just brought you out of Egypt, but I don't really know what's in your heart. Anybody, you see somebody split a seat, you might be liable to follow anybody that split a seat. Right? That's what we always talk about. We talk about all these miracles, anything that we see, any job that we get, any lump sum of money, any kid, child that we get, all these different things that we see that we, that we wonder at that's amazing, all that stuff can be duplicated by the dark side. Right? All of us have to be duplicated by the devil. All of it. One thing he can't duplicate is obedience to the Most High God. So that's why when the Most High God take a man through something, he's going to take him and bring him down to his lowest point. Because he needs you to know that even if somebody come and duplicate this thing, I need to know, are you going to follow me? Right? Are you going to do what I tell you to do? Because I'm I'm it's going to be some tough time. I'm going to help you navigate through it, but you got to be able to trust your man. So that's what he do. He brought us into the wilderness. You think he was on an accident that, that he didn't feed us? That no that it was no water? It's the most high God. 
He just split a darn sea. You think it was an accident that there was no water and he didn't feed us for about seven days when we was walking? Maybe longer than that? Then we go through, no food, no water. We start begging. We're like, man, I want some water, some food. That's what he wanted us to do. But then we got a little ass. You know what I'm saying? He said, all right, go ahead and give him some water. Go ahead and make some, some bread come down from heaven. All right? Go ahead and give him quail. You know what I'm saying? Give him some quail lined up about three or four feet around the whole camp. Just big old stacks of quail surrounding the whole camp. Right? Take your fill. Go ahead and eat. Right? So he's showing us this whole time. He's trying to let us know, I'm the provider. I do all this thing. What you need? If you need it, you're going to get it from me. He said, I did it on purpose. I did it to humble you. Let you know, boy, this is me. I'm doing this. Keep going. Watch this. Whether thou would keep his commandments or no. Uh-huh. And he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna, which thou knowest not. Neither did thy fathers know uh -huh. that he might make thee know that man does not live by bread only. Uh-huh. But by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of the Lord does man live. I thank the most high God. Keep going. Thy raiment waxed not old upon thee, neither did thy foot swell these 40 years. All right, he said 40 years, y'all talking, y'all foot ain't even... Y'all foot didn't even swell? You can imagine we walking throughout the wilderness, we ain't even noticed that. You can just imagine we ain't even noticed. People we probably all swelled up in Egypt. We take a darn walk to go get us um, some straw. You know what I'm saying? To put it with the brick. Put it with the, uh, what are they putting it with? Mortar. With the mortar. You know what I'm saying? We get some straw just so we can go put it with the mortar. We probably, man, our feet swollen like, oh, my feet are coming on every night, rubbing our feet and all type of stuff. Then we spent 40 years in the wilderness. Nobody complained about their darn feet. Their feet didn't swell at all. Nobody even know. You can imagine. We just didn't even notice it. Because that's the type of stuff that God do. He said, he, said, he pointed out. He waited to the very end, just pointed out to you. All that. You didn't notice that, didn't you? He just showed us how limited our thinking is. Just little things. Right? Keep going. Watch this. I love that bird. I mean, your foot didn't even swell. Boy, you didn't even notice. That's how I imagine I'm saying. You didn't even notice your foot didn't swell. Whole time. Whole time your feet being good. Keep going. Thou shalt also consider in thine heart that as a man chastises his son. As a man does what? Chastises his son. As a man beat the brakes off his darn boy. Keep going. So the Lord thy God chastises you. That's how the most high God get it up. Chasing it to you. All right? <clears throat> That's how we look at it. The Most High God disciplines us the same way we discipline. A lot of these people messed up because they, you know what I'm saying, they, they don't discipline their kids. All right, so they can't even relate to it. They be like, oh, okay, that ain't going to mean nothing to them. Right? But if you discipline your kids the way the book tells you to, the same way you at your darn boy, right? The same way you at your darn son, that's the same way the Most High God at us. Well, you better line up. You better straighten up. What's wrong with you? Boy, I told you to do. You better do what I tell you to do. What's wrong with you? Right? That's how the most high God is dealing with us. Is that not? When he brought us out of the when he brought us out of the uh, out of the out of the river and we came into the wilderness and we doing walking around, first thing we do, start complaining. What's the first thing he started doing? Killing folk. People start dying. Start dropping. <clears throat> Every time we did something, first thing he started doing, start killing folk. We start complaining in the wilderness, snakes start biting our butts, killing them. That's a whooping. I mean, that's individuals that dying, but as a whole, Israel was his kid. Right? Israel was his kid, so he's just taking chunks out of our butt. Because Israel, just thinking Israel as a whole kid, a couple individuals dying, not Israel as a whole. So that means that's just a whooping for him. He just getting our butt. Right? For the individual, he made examples out of them. But in, in totality, that was, just a, that was just discipline for Israel. Okay, y'all want to act up? All right, we're going to take a few out to camp then. Kick them out. That's how he deal with us. Grab, uh, grab Hebrews chapter 12. It's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Why are you making so much noise? As a man chasting his son. Chasting his chest. Chasting. Chasting. 
chasing it. It's Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1. Watch what the book got to say. Wherefore, seeing we also are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, uh -oh. let us lay aside every weight. He said, let us lay aside every weight. What do you mean by weight, T? Burden, stress, sin, anything that can distract you. You got to run away. You got to run the race with, with the best tools you need. You know what I'm saying? You can't really run fast. You can't really get to the end if you're carrying all these weights. Yeah. You got to lay aside all that stuff. You know what I'm saying? We have been in a situation in our past, you know what I'm saying? You gotta take off run. Sometimes you gotta shed something. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes you gotta take some stuff off. That thing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Sometimes so you just gotta let that thing go. Like, uh, you know what I'm saying? To keep going. Cause otherwise, your butt's gonna be running slow. And you don't know, you ain't got no time to find out is somebody after me or, or is that somebody else? Yeah. That the only thing you know is it's liable to be Sometimes you just gotta eh, 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 and then keep going. You do that high link one time. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I threw a whole jacket one time. Remember my big old red jacket? You know what I'm saying? That thing is. <laughs> 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 gotta go. How you gonna hop a wall on that thing? That thing get caught on something. Yeah, ah! That thing done. That same thing he's looking at here, that's the way he's trying. In, 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 the, in the literal sense, we look at that and we say, okay, I, I, that's how the most. He's trying to put it in the way we understand stuff. Right? He said, lay, 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 lay aside every weight. You know what I'm saying? And what he's trying to do is all this sin, all these distractions, all this stuff that we let get in the way. All these, sometimes even hopes and dreams. Right? A lot of times, it's nothing, nothing wrong with hoping and dreaming and wanting stuff and all that stuff. But sometimes that stuff is counterproductive to our, our goal. You know that thing ain't going to bring you closer to God. And actually, it's going to distract you from God. He said, lay that stuff aside. Right? At that point, it's a sack. When you lay aside something that's not wrong, a lot of stuff that we lay aside is wrong, right? I gotta stop sinning. I gotta stop cussing. I gotta stop doing all these things. Those things are wrong. There ain't no sacrifice. I just, you, boy, you better line up. Right? Then there's some stuff that's like, I really, really wanna be a doctor. Like, I wanna be a doctor. But to be a doctor, I gotta spend almost 100% of my free time studying. Right? But I know I'd be good at it. That'd be such a good career. I can buy my mama a house. Right? But then you look at it and be like, well, when am I going to have time to learn God's word? But I want to enter into the kingdom. And I also really, really want to be like, I really want to be a rapper. You know what I'm saying? But I'll be a Christian rapper, though. You know what I'm saying? I ain't even going to cuss in my song. But when am I going to have time to learn about what I want to be? You know what I'm saying? So you got to make a choice. You got to sacrifice that. That got to go to the side. You learn about the Most High God. You get your soul corrected. Then you come back and the Most High God to give that on to you. That's what he's talking about. He told, we read it a couple weeks ago. He said, any man that lost anything in this world will get it back in this world and in the world to come. In the regeneration. You don't, you don't even see, I mean, you don't even see us having Bible study. Hey, hey, you don't even see us having Bible study right now, huh? That thing ain't even happening. You ain't, you ain't, you're not even looking at what's going on, huh? Don't do that no more. You come in here, you sit down, you learn the word, or you go in there and darn play. You still got that choice now. Which one? Okay, that's not what I asked you, though. You can go. Right? So we look at these things, and we got to make sure that we understand this is how God is dealing with us. Right? This, this is what God wants. Right? Watch this. Keep going. You got to lay aside the darn weight. Keep running. And the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Uh-huh. Looking unto Yahushua, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, mm -hmm. and is set down at the right hand, of the throne of God. Right? What he's try well, the reason why he said that because he's trying to explain to us the order. He is like, listen, we're gonna run this thing just like Yahushua did. You remember what happened to Yahushua? He came here, he was nothing, humble, just like the most high God dealt with us in Israel. Right? Remember, the first thing he did is what? He spent 40 days in the wilderness, right? 40 days, 40 nights in the wilderness. 
Remember, he didn't have nothing to drink or eat. He dealt with it just like he dealt with Israel. He dealt with his son just like he dealt with Israel. Right? Then after that, he came in. It ain't like right after that he got rich, did he? No. He was still a lowly, lowly man walking through. He said, go ahead and follow me. Got a nice little following. You know what I'm saying? He started hooking people up. You know what I'm saying? Doing miracles, teaching them. Then he moves on. He goes, gets crucified. It wasn't until after the crucifixion, after his death, he was resurrected and he went to the right hand of the Father. That's the victory at that point. All right? He gave us that same outline. He's looking like that's the order. Sacrifice. Set this stuff aside. Run this race. You're going to suffer. But just remember, when Yahushua got done, he went to the right hand of the Father. That's what we after. We have to just ask ourselves, what are we after? If you want to be a doctor, that's cool. Okay, cool. We, we got we got that. You still got to suffer to be a doctor, right? You still got to suffer. You got to put in long hours. You got to suffer. You be a doctor. That's your goal, but that's what you're going to get, though. And that's not even guaranteed. You know what I'm saying? But that's that's what you're going to work towards. That's the best you're going to get as a doctor, right? You get that, be satisfied with it. I'm talking about something bigger right now. All right? Keep going. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, lest ye be wearied and faint in your minds. Mm -hmm. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving Notice against Notice what he sinners. said. He said, lest ye be what? Weary and faint in your minds. He said, you got to constantly remember Yahushua. A lot of people, a lot of people, when you talk to them now, and you get to tell them, you're like, you know what I'm saying? Well, you know, it's hard, and it's that and other, and you try to bring it up. Well, you know, Yahushua, you know, he's suffering. You know what they're going to tell you? Yeah, but he was God, though. That was Yahushua, though. You know what I'm saying? We just, I mean, we just humans. Right? Ain't that completely against what this just said? No, it's the same thing. Keep it, read it again. Read it for me one more time. What verse is that? Five? Uh, three. Three? This is verse three. This is uh, Hebrews chapter 12, verse three. Watch this. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself. So he just told you what the man went through. Right? He told you the man came here, he suffered, then he died, and he went to the right hand of the Father. All right? So we know Yahushua's story. All right? Now he coming back. He's like, consider him. Right? Look at him. Think about him. And then say what? Lest you be wearied and faint in your mind. If you don't think about him, you'll mess around and be wearied and you'll faint. In other words, you'll give up. If you don't think about him, stuff be going, you'll be like, you know what? Man, I can't take it. I just can't take it no more. You know what I'm saying? Ain't nothing happening. The most I got, I mean, think, it don't seem like nothing going right in my life. And you just be like, you know what? Forget this. God can't be real. Or even if he is real, you know what I'm saying? I don't feel he care about me. Right? He do all these different things. It's important that we look at it. He said, that's because the only, only reason that can happen is because they're not doing what? Obeying. They're not considering the man. If you consider the man, that's, that's the only way you go. Why do you think there's always going to be like a spiritual resistance to learn about Yahushua? Right? You're going to have people try to make duck dive and dip and dodge, try to get out of all that stuff because the whole point, if you start considering this man and thinking about this man and everything you do, you start looking at it, man, this stuff I'm going through ain't nothing. That ain't nothing. Man, cried out to Yah, he cried out to the Most High Yah, he said, he looked at him, he said, man, listen, if there's any other way, you know what I'm saying? If it's any other way, you know what I'm saying? Let that thing be. But I know that to be your will. He didn't want to suffer. He's suffering just like us. At the end of the day, man said, I gotta stay faithful. We consider him, we can, we can, we can, we can keep at it. Otherwise, we'll mess around and faint. We'll grow weary in our mind and we'll faint in our mind. Keep going. Ye have not yet resisted unto blood, striving against sin. Uh-huh. And none of us resisted on the blood striving against sin. Right? We haven't strived against sin to death. Notice he said, not yet. You know what I'm saying? He ain't saying that thing ain't going to happen. He just said, that thing ain't happened yet. You know what I'm saying? What you crying for? The man died for his. You ain't died yet. What you crying for? Keep going. And ye have forgotten the exhortation which speaks unto you as, as unto children. children. My right? Son. That's what that's what Deuteronomy was telling him. He was like, man, he did as a man chasteneth his son. 
That's how I'm going to deal with y'all. All right? Keep going. Go keep going. My son, despise not thou the chastening of the Lord, nor faint when thou art rebuked of him. Uh-huh. For whom the Lord loves, he chastens, and scourges every son whom he receives. All right? If you endure chastening, God deals with you as with sons. For what son is he whom the father chasteneth not? Now, one thing a lot of people miss. If you endure chastening, he deals with you as a son. You can't get it and the most high God sent something and you be like, oh man, forget all that. You give up. He said, he ain't dealing with you like a son. He's weeding you out. You know what I'm saying? But if you get there and you endure it and you go through it and be like, man, this is rough. Like Job, like, man, this thing is rough. Keep my faithfulness though. This thing is tight. Woo! I'ma keep, I'ma keep obeying. I know that much. If you deal with them like that, most like I said, okay. That's something that we can work with. That's something that we can do. Alright? Keep going. He said he deal with you like sons. For what son is it he is he whom the father chasteneth not? But if ye be without chastisement, whereof all are partakers, then ye are bastards and not sons. He said, you're what? Bastards and not sons. What's a bastard? Fatherless child. Yeah. He is not the dad. Right? It's important that we focus on that because... That goes that everybody's a child of God theory. That kills it. Right? A lot of people just say, if we all... That, that's one of the questions. They ask me all the time online. Okay, so if we are children of God, how could God do this or allow this or this, that, and the other? This kills, he said, if you don't read it again for me. But if he, if ye be without chastisement, where of all our partakers, then are ye bastards and not sons. That's how he weeds you out. That's how he determines if you are a son of God or not. Hold oh, we got there. Go to... Uh, First uh, John chapter three for me. First John chapter three verse. Uh, sorry, six. I don't know exactly what I want, but I know six is the best starting point. It's First John chapter three verse six. That's my pop signal. Whosoever abides in Him sins not. Whosoever sins has not seen Him, neither known Him. Little, Keep going. little children, let no man deceive you. He that does righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. Uh -huh. He that commits sin is of the devil, for the devil sins from the beginning. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Uh -huh. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. Uh -huh. In this, the children of God are manifested. In this, the children of God are made obvious. And what else? And the children of the devil. And the children of the devil. So it's two, it's two children out here now. You know what I'm saying? It's a whole bunch of children, but it's only two children, two types of children. You the children of the devil or you the children of the God? <laughs> That's about it. That's how that thing work out. Not everybody is a child of God. You can't walk into it making that assumption. Because you walk into it, you're right. It don't make sense. I tell people all the time. It makes no sense that God loves. I wouldn't believe it either if God said, I love everybody, but some of y'all going to hell. That don't make sense. Like, I wouldn't. I love you. No matter what you do, I love you. Anything you do, I'm going to love you. But some people still going to hell. I'd be like, nah, I can't rock with that. I don't know. I don't know nothing about this guy. This guy, he don't even make, his, he don't even make sense. That's love? Love is me. I can take you. I don't do, I love you, but you don't do what I want you to do, and I'm sending you in a permanent place? Like, I'm permanently getting rid of you? That ain't love. I don't think that's love. I understand a little discipline, a little something. That's love. You know what I'm saying? But permanent? We good? Like, never again? Could you imagine somebody saying, yeah, I love you, but I'm never talking to you again. I never want any dealings with you. No, but I love you the whole time. But I never want any dealings with you. I never want to hear from you. Never want to know anything that you're doing ever again. I love you though. I'll be like, no, I ain't love. I don't know what you're talking about. That ain't love. That's you being done with something. That's you giving up. That's hate. You despise them. All right? Keep going. Watch this. For this purpose, the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Mm hmm. 
Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. He said, whosoever is born of God is a child of God. That means that they, they were chastised, they were, they were punished, and then they, they endured. All right? So who, whosoever was punished and endured cannot what? Cannot commit sin. Does not commit sin. Does not commit sin. Why? For his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. If you endure, and what it means to endure is to keep the faith. So you keep obedience even through rough times, even through challenges, even through God's punishment. All right? Then, he said, you got a seed in you. And you do not sin at that point. Keep going. In this, the children of God are manifest in the children of the devil. Mm -hmm. And that's how you do it. That's how you make it obvious, right? Keep going. Whosoever does not righteousness is not of God. Neither he that loves not his brother. Grab, uh, let's go ahead and jump back into Deuteronomy where we leave off. Uh, chapter 8, verse 5. In Deuteronomy chapter 8. G grab uh, Matthew chapter 3 for me, then we're going to go back to Deuteronomy chapter 8. It's Matthew chapter 3. Give me verse 1. In those days, John the Baptist preaching came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judah and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Mm -hmm. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. Right? We all know a little bit about John the Baptist, right? John the Baptist came before Yahushua. Right? He came before Yahushua. And then, he came... Telling people about Yahushua before he even knew who Yahushua was, really. He had prepared the way. That was God's man. Most high God said, or, or Yahushua said to him, he said, uh, there's no man greater. John the Baptist was the greatest born amongst women, born of a woman. All right? Watch this. And the same John had his raiment of camel's hair and a, a leathern girdle about his loins. That same John, he wore camel's hair and a leather belt. What else? And his meat was locusts and wild honey. And he was in the wilderness eating bugs and honey. <laughs> then went out to That's him. how the Most High God will punish us. Huh? He'll put us in. Just know that when we look at these people, these men of God, they wasn't living in luxurious houses. You no, know, these people was out here working. Had it rough. He out there eating bugs and darn honey. Wearing camel's hair and leather. That ain't bad. You know what I'm saying? His clothes wasn't bad. You know what I'm saying? His clothes wasn't bad now. You know what I'm talking about? The homies out there, he's like, you know what I'm saying? Well, okay. He got some expensive clothes on. But, you know what I'm saying? Camel's he, hair. He is eating bugs. Huh? Camel's hair. Oh, yeah, that's expensive. <laughs> You ain't, about to, you, ain't, you ain't about to just chop up a camel and just put it on there. You ain't never heard nobody in the book wearing no camels here. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Hey, yeah, yeah that, that thing was expensive. You know what I'm saying? You know how much a camel cost back then? That was like buying, you know what I'm saying? Like a bin. You know what I'm saying? Hey, one thing that pastor, this pastor online, he's talking about, uh, it's a pastor, I read a, read a little article. Uh, I read the headline. I didn't really read the whole article, but apparently, you know what I'm saying? He bought a jet. You know what I'm saying? Like millions of dollars worth of jet. He's a pastor. And then he said, his defense was, or they said his defense was, that if Yahushua was around, if Jesus was around today, you know what I'm saying, he wouldn't be driving a bucket. You know what I'm saying? And the, the, what he gave for, so, so, to support that was, he came riding in on a donkey. You know what I'm saying? I thought about that thing. I was like, mm, it ain't wrong. You know what I'm saying? Like, it ain't like a, like, you know what I'm saying? Not everybody had a donkey. You know what I'm saying? Like, donkey, that thing was, you know what I'm saying? That was baller stuff. You know what I'm saying? Who rode in on a donkey before? Balaam. Balaam rode in on the donkey. Who else rode in on the donkey? Yahushua. I don't know. What about Solomon? Solomon. Yeah. Didn't Solomon run into run in? We came in on the donkey. Yeah, hey, Solomon was a baller. What about Saul? Right when Saul came king, I believe he came in on the donkey too. Didn't he lose it? That's the one he lost. He was looking for that thing, wasn't he? He lost it. I think he uh, did. He lose donkeys or was it a donkey or a horse? It might have been, yeah, he lost something, it might have been goats though, or something like that, I don't know. It's probably, it's probably sheep. Yeah, it might have been, but I don't know. But yeah, I'm saying, he, 
I believe, if I'm not mistaken, Saul rode in on a donkey. Oh. Solomon rode. I thought that, if I'm not mistaken, our kings would ride in on donkeys. You know what I'm saying? After they anointed. That's why. That's why y'all sure had to ride in on one, right? So we look at it, and we look at these things. You know, these luxurious animals. So you know, it, it clothes. Whole point is, clothes wasn't cheap, but <laughs> man was out there. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? He's out there eating bugs, right? Keep going. That's just us, right? As Hebrew people, a lot of people, you know what I'm saying, they got us messed up. Hebrew gonna look nice. You know what I'm saying? We Hebrew. You know what I'm saying? We gonna mess around and look nice. You know what I'm saying? We gonna make sure we all right. Even when we fast. Books say, books say when we fast, you know what I'm saying? We looking around, walking around here looking miserable. Say so you better anoint your darn face. But go in there, why it's unhebrew like for these people talking about, no, don't don't you ever shave your beard, cut your beard. I need to shave mine now, but you know what I'm saying? Don't you ever cut your that's a sin. You ain't shut your mouth. We always we look nice. You know what I'm saying? We a clean people. We ain't working out here looking raggedy. That's not us. Right? That's these other people that do that stuff don't care. We care about our appearance. Right? I mean, it's out there, you know what I'm saying? Can't wait. Like, no, you give me my jacket, though. You know what I'm saying? I'm going out there. They give me my jacket and my leather belt. What y'all talking about? <laughs> Keep going. I eat a bug. Then went out to him Jerusalem and all Judah and all the region round about Jordan uh -huh. and were baptized of him in Jordan, confessing their sins. Uh -huh. But when he saw many of the Pharisees and Sadducees come to his baptism, he said unto them, What did he say? O generation of vipers. He said what? O generation of vipers. O generation of snakes. Who has warned you to flee from the wrath to come? You know what he told them when he was there? He called them generations of snakes? Vipers. He told them. The sons of the devil. He's trying to tell them, y'all sons of the devil. Y'all not sons of God. He said, who warned y'all? Who warned y'all to try to get up under this, underneath this uh, condemnation that's coming y'all way? Right? Grab a uh, Luke for me. Let me get up out of here. Grab, uh, grab Luke chapter 3, then we're going to go to Deuteronomy 8, and we'll get up out of here. Hey! All right. It's Luke chapter 3. Give me verse 15. And as the people were in expectation, and all men must mused in their hearts of John, whether he were the Messiah or not, John answered, saying unto them all, I indeed baptize you with water, uh -huh. but one mightier than I comes, and the latchet of whose shoes I am not worthy to unloose, yep. he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and with fire. Mm-hmm. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor, and will gather the wheat into his garner, but the chaff he will burn with fire, unquenchable. In other words, he's going to deal with y'all butts. All right? What else? And many other things in his exhortation preached he unto the people. Uh-huh. But Herod the Tetrarch being... Herod the who? Tetrarch. Uh-huh. Watch this. Being reproved by him for Herodias, his brother Philip's wife. Yeah. So hold on. John been running his mouth about Herod's brother. Right? He ain't running his mouth. Now, here he came into position. He got the position of fire, I mean, uh, power. And then watch what happened. And for all the evils which Herod had done, added yet this above all, that he shut up John in prison. He put him in prison. Now, what did John deserve from the most high God's point of view? What, what did John deserve to be going to prison? No. None. But guess what? If you endure, that show that you a child of the most high God. Right? John, keep the faith. Most High God, after he died, Most High God put it on Yahushua hard to tell him. Man, I was the greatest among women. You know that he didn't say it before. Because he had to endure first. After he endured, he'd be like, that's a bad man there. Even Yahushua had to give it up. Like, man, that's a bad man there. Y'all might have counted him out. That's a bad man there. That boy's out there eating locusts. You know what I'm saying? And right after that, got his butt put in jail. He still kept the faith. I, that's the greatest amongst uh, the, uh, amongst those that were born a woman. Right? Let me see what else we got there, and then we can go to Deuteronomy 8. You got anything else there? Now, when all the people were baptized, it came to pass that Yahshua also being baptized and praying, the heaven was open. Right. Let's go to uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, and then where we leave off. Let's try to finish off Deuteronomy 8, and then we can get up out of here. Uh, verse 5. It's Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 5. I thought we were further along. Now. 
at Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 5. Thou shalt also consider in thy heart that as a man chastises his son, so the Lord thy God chasteneth thee. Mm -hmm. Therefore thou shalt keep the commandments of the Lord thy God to walk in his ways and to fear him. Mm -hmm. For the Lord thy God brings thee into a good land, a mm -hmm. land of brooks of water, of fountains and depths that spring out of valleys and hills, mm -hmm. a land of wheat and barley and vines and fig trees and pomegranates, a land of oil, olive, and honey. Mm -hmm. A land wherein thou shalt eat bread without scarceness. Thou shalt not lack anything in it. A land whose stones are iron, and out of whose hills thou mayest dig brass. Mm -hmm. When thou hast eaten and art full, then thou shalt bless the Lord thy God for the good land which he has given you. Beware that you forget not the Lord thy God in not keeping his commandments and his judgments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. Lest when thou hast eaten and art full, and hast built goodly houses, and dwell therein, and when thy herds and thy flocks multiply, and thy silver and thy gold is multiplied, and all that thou hast is, all that thou hast is multiplied, then thine heart be lifted up, and you forget the Lord your God, which brought you uh, forth out of the land of Egypt from the house of bondage. Right, he said, I didn't took you through some tough time. He said, after that, y'all gonna have some, some good stuff. Y'all gonna be, you know what I'm saying, y'all gonna be living pretty good. He's like, just keep in mind, ain't none of this because of y'all, right? He said, ain't none of this because of anything that y'all did. Don't get it messed up. He said, you mess around, get that far, and then you forget the most high God, right? Keep going. Who led thee through the great and terrible wilderness wherein were fiery serpents and scorpions and drought, mm -hmm. where there was no water, who brought thee forth water out of the rock of Flint, mm -hmm. who fed thee in the wilderness with manna, which thy fathers knew not, that he might humble thee, mm -hmm. and that he might prove thee, Mm -hmm. To do thee good at thy latter end. And thou say in thine heart, My power and my mind is my hand has gotten me this wealth. But you shall remember the Lord thy God, for it is he that gives thee power to get wealth. That he may establish his covenant which he swear unto his fathers as it is this day. Mm -hmm. And it shall be, if you do all, if you... And it shall be, if thou do at all forget the Lord thy God, and walk after other gods, and serve them... And worship them. I testify against you this day that ye shall surely perish. Mm -hmm. As the nations which the Lord destroyed before your face, so shall you perish. Mm -hmm. Because you would not be obedient to the voice of the Lord your God. Right? So he set it up for us already. After we go in there, y'all get to doing the same thing these other folks did. Y'all gonna perish just like they did. Right? He tried to make it clear for us. I'm bringing you into this land, but I'm not bringing, it to, into, bringing you into this land because y'all so righteous. I'm bringing you because these people are sinners. The same way I take these sinners out. I'll take it out. I'll take y'all out too. And that's exactly what happened to us. We got over there. We continued to sin. We did what we did. And then the Gentiles took it. Because he gave it over to the Gentiles. Right? Almost the same thing that he did to these folks, he did to us. He had the Gentiles come in large numbers. They came into the land. They ran us up out of the land. Little by little. They didn't do it all at once. They did it little by little. And then they took over the land. And now you got Gentiles fighting over the land. Right? You got the you got the you got the Arabs, you know what I'm saying, versus these uh these European Jews. You know what I'm saying? Shooting missiles at each other, darn blowing each other up, killing folks. Alright? Over some land and none of it's there. Land that all of them gonna be judged for if they don't repent. Alright? They just don't know the book, or they do know the book and they're trying to get around it, thinking there's a different way around it. You know what I'm saying? Ain't no way around there. No nobody gets by, everybody gonna get it. All in due time. You know what I'm saying? You got to relax the end of the chapter. All right? Next week, we're going to go ahead and go into chapter 9. You know what I'm saying? We'll continuously move through Deuteronomy. Try to understand and make sure that we uh, we capture all the details, our commandments, everything that he tried to make us keen to before we enter into the land. Then when we get into Joshua, it's go time. We're going to see how Joshua, you know what I'm saying, led us through. But it's important to lay that groundwork and understand where our people were mindset-wise in terms of uh, going into the land and how we felt about it. Any questions? All right, well, let's pray out.